the first passage in Acts chapter 2. That, that was the original Pentecost sermon by Peter. And what song did Peter quote from when he's preaching uh, to those thousands of Jewish people in the day of Shavuot? Yeah, he quoted from Psalm 16. So that's the reason in the lectionary uh, both are read out when you notice in the epistle and sometimes uh, the lessons are very intentionally chosen so they connect what kind of uh, joy is spoken about in Peter. Does anybody remember if you're listening? What kind of joy is spoken about? It's unspeakable joy. Unspeakable joy. Now, what kind of joy would be unspeakable? Have you ever had unspeakable joy? Any joy that's not a sin against the Holy Spirit. Okay. Any joy that's not a sin against the Holy Spirit. Uh, how about the birth of your child? or grandchild, or your niece, or nephew? Do you, do you feel a joy that you don't quite know how to express? Yeah, what about at a wedding? Uh, our son, uh, James, is getting married in just a few weeks. My hunch, last with many weddings, there will be joy. There's something about weddings and joy unspeakable joy. Now, the season of Easter is how many days? It's 50 days all up to the next big celebration of Pentecost. And so, you remember Jesus, after his resurrection, he didn't immediately go to heaven, did he? How long did he hang around before his ascension? How long did he walk around with him for? Does anybody remember? Yeah, 40 days. Uh, 40 is quite symbolic. You think of the 40 days of Lent, 40 days of Jesus uh, in the wilderness, and, and many, many celebrations. So, we have Easter is a 40 plus 10, and after Jesus ascended, what did the early disciples, <clears throat> all 120, what, what did they do for 10 days? They did. Yeah, they did, but what else did they do in the upper room for 10 days? Pray. Yeah, they prayed, they had a, a 10 day prayer meeting, uh, our prayer meeting every Saturday at the Monte you're all welcome. Imagine if instead of being one or two hours, we said we're going to have a 10 day prayer meeting. Uh, come to the Monte we're going to lock the doors and we're going to pray for 10 days. It might not have an impact on us. That's no wonder the Holy Spirit uh, came down in the context of all that amazing work, and there was incredible uh, joy. So we're now in what's called the second Sunday of Easter, despite the fact that all the chocolate and the bunnies have disappeared from the local grocery stores. Easter is not over. It's a 58-day celebration. Uh, now you notice the gospel passage is about guess who? And Thomas. Uh, and it kind of fits. A week after Easter, people have questions. What was that all about? Well, we're continuing. Easter is not over. We're focusing on fullness of joy in his presence. Psalm 16. Let's take a look at Psalm 16 in your Bibles. It is a prayer from King David. King David wrote many of the 150 songs, and King David was such an amazing worshiper. He made some 
significant mistakes, didn't he? But the Bible says he had a heart after God. He was an amazing worshiper. He says, preserve me, O God, from me do I put my trust. And so his whole focus is on where? Where does he point? Yeah, it's God. Focus, it's focus on God's presence. Everything in Psalm 16, uh, my grandmother is one of her favorite psalms, is focused on God's presence. There is fullness of joy in his presence. And why do you come to church? We come to focus corporately on God's presence, and we're present to each other, but we're present to God. That's the meaning of communion. We're communing with God himself and with one another. Verse 2, O my soul, thou hast said unto the Lord, Thou art my God, my goodness extendeth not to thee. And so David is actually talking to himself, reminding himself of what is true. And very often in the Bible, it, it says, remember, remember. And because we lose sight of God's goodness, we lose sight of his presence. You know, even in a marriage or a family, you can become non-present to your spouse. Familiarity can breed what? Contempt or absence. And so even though uh, you're in the same house, the same room, you can be non-present. And instead of the non-anxious presence being peaceful with each other, it could be the anxious non-presence. And you'll be amazed how many people uh, in families are not present to each other. They're hiding behind their newspapers or their cell phones or their TV sets. And you almost don't dare interrupt them because they're. this is a culture of distraction, isn't it? Uh, part of the reason many people don't go to church, they're radically distracted. They're not used to being present. And so they miss the fullness of joy in his presence. Verse 3 is a significant but. But to the saints that are on earth and to the excellent in whom is all my delight. He's talking about God's people. Powerful statement. He says, their sorrows shall be multiplied that hasten after other gods. Their drink offerings of blood will I not offer, nor take up their names into my lips. He's saying, I'm going to stay focused on who? Yeah, on the Lord, uh, God Almighty, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. In the Middle East, there are many other Deities, many other distractions on the north shore. There are many other distractions, consumerism and materialism and sports coming first and even family, uh, which is a good thing, coming first. And unless we focus, we lose sight of God's presence and we lose the fullness of joy. Verse 5, David focuses, he says, the Lord is the portion of my inheritance and of my cup. Thou maintainest my lot. What is Paul saying? Uh, Paul is focusing again on God. He's very prayerful. He said, you know, you're what keeps me in line. You're what keeps me safe. You are my savior. You are my protector. I turn to you in the midst of my challenges. Verse 6, the lions are fallen unto me in pleasant places. Yea, I have a godly heritage. Yeah, God has an amazing way. As we focus on Him, He can turn everything that's against us to our advantage. Can he? All things will work together for the good. Romans 8, 28, for those who love Him, called according to His purpose. And God has an amazing Ability in the midst of the worst things you're going through, the most difficult family problems, the most difficult health situations, he can release you a goodly heritage. 
if we stay focused on him. He will keep you in perfect peace if your mind is stayed on him. The Bible says, uh, Paul, David continues, he, he focuses once again on God, and in verse 7, I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My reins also instruct me in the night season. So it doesn't matter whether it's day or night, whether it's uh, day or night, I'm going to stay focused on God. Uh, God is not a once a week activity. Do I hear an amen? Yeah, God is a day and night preoccupation. We seek first his kingdom in this culture, if we seek it second, he falls off the greater shape. But if you focus on his presence, there is fullness of joy. Verse 8, and you can see how David is, he just keeps hammering away at this theme. I have set the Lord occasionally before me, is that what it says? Because he's at my right hand. Where is Jesus at this very moment? Yeah, at the right hand of the Father. Therefore, verse 9, my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh shall also rest in hope. That's very, very powerful. My heart is glad. My glory rejoices. My flesh shall also rest in hope. And so where does David refocus again and again and again? Where does he refocus? On eternal life. Exactly. And on God, who is the God of eternal life. And as he focuses on God, as there's joy in his presence, his glory rejoices. It's very powerful. And the hope, that overflowing hope, gives him rest. And so he doesn't have to strive. He doesn't have to get anxious. He can say, God is my refuge and my strength. And in verse 10, and, and this is what uh, Peter was quoting on the day of Pentecost. For thou will not leave my soul in hell, neither will thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. And so Peter is saying, you know, resurrection from the dead, eternal life, it's built, it's right at the cross and right there in Psalm 16. What happened on the day of Resurrection Sunday was predicted in the Old Testament. And so Jesus didn't stay in the grave, he rose again. And because he rose again, verse 11, he will show us what? The path of life. Isn't that incredible? Christianity, at the heart of it, is life is stronger then death, love, is stronger than hate. None light is stronger than darkness. Nothing can destroy the light, the love, and the light that we see in Jesus. He leads us in the path of life, and that's where we're falling. And here's the punchline. The punchline that was quoted, and it's on my my grandmother's gravestone in thy presence is fullness of joy. Where do we get joy from? Where do we get unspeakable joy from? By refocusing on God. In the midst of all the distractions in 2017, we refocus in thy presence. I will choose to be present to you, Lord. I will choose to be present because it's as I focus on you. Turn your eyes on Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face, and the things that serve will go strange and dim. 
in the light of his glory and grace. Have I right in our pleasures forevermore? We think for our loved ones. We're already tasting his pleasures, but they're experiencing the fullness of what we're just tasting. Isn't that good news? And I think of so many of our loved ones who've gone before us. It's good news. There is fullness of joy in his presence. Let's pray. Ah, dear Jesus, we know one of the fruit of the Spirit is joy. And we pray today on this second Sunday of Easter that you will fill us with overflowing joy, overflowing hope, 